Welcome or welcome back. My name is Emily and I'm an artist. So today I would like to take you along for the journey. I don't know if it's going to be a good one, but we're going to paint oils on Yupo paper. I am not quite sure what I'm going to paint yet. Probably a portrait, right? Probably a portrait. We're going to try. Yeah, so if you don't know what Yupo paper is, it's a true innovation in fine art substrates. This synthetic, tree-free paper is everlasting and non-absorbent. It resists buckling with wet media and can be wiped clean. Pigments will retain true clarity and brightness. This is Yupo medium. So yeah, like it says, oil is not going to want to cling to this. It's going to sit on the surface, which is, you know, gonna be difficult, especially for a Al Prima. Painting, painting wet on wet, because if you try and go back in over top of something you've already painted with too heavy of a hand, it's just gonna wipe off. You know, that could also be interesting because if you make a mistake, you just whoop, wipe it off. This might be a big old hot mess, I don't know. But I'm still excited. I've seen lots of people do great things with Yupo paper, so maybe I can do a decent thing. Yeah, let's give it a go. Okay, so I started off by looking at some inspiration on Instagram. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous, so I wanted to see what other artists have accomplished with Oil on Yupo. I will put the names of the artists I looked at on screen for you. You should definitely go check them out if you get the chance. So here I am cleaning my glass oil palette. If you haven't seen my video on how I made this bad boy, I will have the link to the video up in the cards. So here I'm just taping the piece of Yupo to this piece of cardboard. The cool thing is that because the paper or surface doesn't buckle at all, I didn't need to, you know, completely tape it down like you would watercolor paper. I just taped it at the top for convenience sake. I wasn't entirely sure if I would be able to draw on the surface with a pencil or a cold erase pencil. Luckily the cold erase went on really well. I just used a gentle hand because I didn't want to create any, you know, indentations into the piece of Yupo. I didn't want paint to pool. So I started off with burnt umber and a little bit of odorless mineral spirits to get that initial block in down of values. First impressions is that the surface is so strange, so smooth. It is really, really smooth. It kind of feels like something that you would package a product in, not something I would ever think to paint on. I imagine if you've painted on a synthetic surface before, like plastic or maybe even glass, then you would know what this sort of feels like. You can see I started blocking in those lips and it just wasn't really going how I wanted it to, so I just wiped it out. And that did wipe out the pencil sketch, but I was able just to quickly sketch it in again. I am always, always, always in favor of wiping something out if it doesn't look right. Don't be afraid to do that. If something's wrong, fix it sooner rather than later. I know it's scary, but you can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. Wipe it out. Or don't. <laughs> if it looks good, don't wipe it out. Don't listen to me. So after letting that burnt umber layer set for a little bit, I don't know, I think I maybe gave it 10 minutes or so. This was a tip from Nicolas Uribe. I asked him some I asked him for some tips when I was watching one of his live streams. He and his partner Danny have an amazing channel where they live stream and sometimes post videos and he does a lot of oil paintings, sometimes gouache, but he has worked on Yupo before, so when I caught one of his streams I asked him, I was like, hey, do you have any tips? I'm nervous. And one of his tips was that you can let that initial layer set. I think he said for 20 minutes. Mine seemed to set really fast and it worked. I let that underpainting set and I, when I came back with the layers on top of color, they went on really nicely. As long as I went in with a gentle hand and a soft brush, it didn't seem to, you know, 
strip away that underpainting too much. So I always block in the darker areas first and then I will go in with the mid-tones and finally the highlights. I had a lot of fun with this eye. I think I had a good time with all of the hues in there um, and also focusing on shapes and edges to create a nice interesting, a nice interesting little painting. One thing I was finding with the Yupo is that you can be very deliberate with your brush strokes. I think the key to success with Yupo is really not to overwork it. I made myself stop a little earlier than I maybe would have if I was painting on paper or canvas. So I think in my head, I had thought of Yupo as this big, crazy, scary uh, substrate, and I made myself pretty nervous. Or not nervous, but I just thought it was going to be like super alien feeling. And you know, it was, but it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. You know, it didn't feel like slipping on ice or something. I don't know if that's just like a super Canadian <laughs> way to think about it, but it was a little easier to control than I thought. And maybe that's because I went in super cautious, you know, like take a deep breath and then, you know, where am I going to put each brush stroke, you know, sweat dripping down my forehead? <laughs> no, that didn't happen, but I was, I would say over prepared and thus it, it went better than I expected, so maybe that's a good thing. You know, I didn't expect it to be a walk in the park, and it wasn't. But I really, really enjoyed the way the paint handled on this surface. I think this video, you're just watching me fall in love with this new substrate for me. Oh, another cool thing with Yupo is that and I mean, you, could, you can do this on anything, but it really works well on Yupo. Is using the back of your brush to kind of scratch away at the paint. I think this gives a really cool look because it allows light to shine through those areas. It creates this little bit of transparency. I mean, I certainly wouldn't go overboard with it, but I think it adds a little some something to these studies. Okay, so on to this little lip study. Now, to be completely honest, lips are probably a, a, one of the biggest weaknesses for me when it comes to a portrait. The, the lips and the overall mouth area, the, the muzzle, if you will. I think just focusing in on this area in particular was a very good practice for me, and I think I'll definitely do more of it. I don't think some people realize how, just how nuanced this area of the face is. The muscles around the mouth, very subtle, and it can just look so wrong so fast. A good thing to keep in mind is that the top lip is usually darker than the bottom lip. Most lighting is going to be from the top, but if you know, a face is lit from the bottom, it would be the opposite. It's a very good idea to keep the angles and planes in mind while working on lips. You know, they're not, you know, just two flat things. You can cut across the form with your paintbrush to indicate this. So, <laughs> it is the next day, and I'm hoping to do a couple more studies on the same page. I wanted to do a portrait, but I had so much fun doing these little individual feature studies that 
I think I'm just gonna do a couple more of those for this video. This might be my new favorite substrate to work on um, because it's so smooth and non-absorbent you really can only paint with you know one layer of paint maybe maybe two <laughs> um, but you are able to sort of let the paint set for a few minutes and then it is a little bit easier to apply on top so this is the <laughs> This is what the palette looks like after doing those studies. Kind of chaotic. I put some gel medium on my palette to use with the paint because I figured that I wouldn't be able to use a lot of wet medium. But I didn't end up using a lot of it. I mostly have been using the paint straight from the tube. I just do sort of a burnt umber washy block in with just a little bit of odorless mineral spirits. Okay, so as you heard me say, this is the next day. I'm just going in and doing a couple more sketches. I'm doing a nose study and also an ear. The two paintings above actually set up really nicely, though they are still a little bit wet to the touch. So I'm being very careful not to put my big dumb hand anywhere on them. All of my brushes were still a little bit wet from cleaning them the night before. So I'm going in with some different brushes that aren't my favorite, but <laughs> they're doing the trick. This brush is actually a angled brush that I trimmed into a flat brush because all of my super soft flat brushes are still a little bit wet from washing. I don't know, you can never have too many flat brushes. I'm just doing my burnt umber block in. I'd love to know if any of you guys are painting or sketching along with me at home. I love throwing on a art video while I'm sketching in my sketchbook. I'd also love to know if any of you have tried painting on Yubo, whether it be oil or gouache or acrylic or ink. It's a wild, wild substrate, so it would be cool to know if you have experienced it yourself or if you would try it out yourself. Also, please feel free to let me know if there are any artist materials or mediums that you'd like to see me try out, if there's something you've been itching to try but you're not sure about it, I would love to give it a go for you. I love the idea of trying out all sorts of mediums. Yeah, you never know, you never know what's gonna stick. I had no idea I would love working on Yupo this much. You can probably see that the dark blockins here are even a little more red than normal because there is quite a bit of blood in the ear and nose. The shadows will be even more red leaning in these features. So I think this nose was probably my least favorite of the bunch. I certainly don't hate it, but when I look at the four, my eyes definitely don't hang around on this one too long. I don't think I picked the best reference. There wasn't a lot of value variation, or at least not as much as I would like. But yeah, I also probably didn't handle it the best. I much preferred how the ear turned out. I think the ear went pretty well. I think it's a tie for me between the ear and the eye for which of the four studies is my favorite. I don't know. Feel free to let me know which of the four is your favorite. I would really love to do a full portrait on Yupo, so I don't know if anybody's interested in seeing that, but that is certainly something I can do.
doing this ear is really nostalgic because one of my first videos on this channel years ago before I even thought about making videos, I guess in a more serious way, was an ear study in, I think, acrylic paint. I haven't touched acrylic paint in years, but it did kind of feel interesting to be painting an ear again. I really love ears. I think it's something I always appreciate in a portrait is a nice good ear. They're just so interesting. They are a great exploration in edges because there are soft edges and hard edges, lots of interesting form to play around with, and they're all unique, like snowflakes. <laughs> is pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are. If you are interested in watching more art videos, feel free to subscribe. It means a lot. I will see you next time. 